Yeah. Alright, Robbie, um, you got a new job now, yeah? yeah? Yeah. What's your new job, mate? You're a bit of a union man, yeah? Yeah, I've joined the Exco of the uh, of Uppy, the players union in Indonesia. So, yeah, I'm just looking to sort of help the boys out if they've got any troubles. So, you're going to be kept pretty busy then? <laughs> yeah, I will be, mate. Um, yeah, hopefully things will change now with the LPI coming in and. Um, yeah, just I'm looking forward to it actually, like helping the boys out, and make sure that everyone get treated right. Because you know, apart from the fan, apart from the fans, the players are the most important part of the game. Yeah. Um, now I understand that under the new PSA side, it's going to be a, a, looking at multi-year contracts now for players and salary caps and that sort of stuff. Is there? I think these multi-year contracts will be good, you know, if the players are happy with them, you know, it gives a bit more security. Uh -huh. So, um, with the salary cap and all that, I think, you know, salary caps are alright, but not on individual players' salaries. Um, yeah, like they've got a salary cap back in the A-League, and that seems to be working alright. Um, you know, as long as it's sort of not too low, it's not like sort of the cutting players' wages down what they were before on in uh, the ISL. You know, as long as it's, you know, it's fair and that for the players and the clubs, you know, I'm, I'm for it. You know. Do you think that, I mean, it's going to have an impact on, on the quality of players who can be attracted to come and play here? I think, you know, if the salary cap's low, it will sort of attract from the players that want to sort of come and sort of help Indonesian football out um, to improve the, improve the standard of the game. Um, yeah, it's sort of a catch-22, you know, you don't want clubs sort of going down, you don't want clubs sort of, how do you say it, uh, spending too much, not being able yeah. to pay the players six months down the track. So um, I think it's all about finding that like, sort of good, you know, that sort of that halfway point, you know, so the players are happy and the clubs are happy, you know. Uh, you mentioned uh, the A League and the salary caps have got players there because I think it's about a year or so ago, Bam Bam Pamunkas, who's a yeah. striker, he had trials with Wellington, but that was never really going to be a go anyway, was it? Because the chances are he'd be earning less there than he's on here. Yeah, but I think it would have been a great experience for him to go there. I think, personally, he went to the wrong club when he went to Wellington. I thought he would have been best suited to go to a club like Perth. Yeah. It's got a very big Indonesian community. The weather's a lot different than Wellington. You know, I heard when you went there, the weather wasn't the best. And, yeah, it's not easy when you sort of come here with it's great weather all the time and you go to sort of Wellington where it's cold, windy, the pitches are heavy and that. And it takes you a good, like, sort of two, three weeks to adapt. So. Right. I think he would have done great at a team like Perth Glory. Um, we got plenty of Indonesian fans there and that, and you know, you got the Indonesian restaurants and all that stuff. And it's great weather all the time, and the pitches are similar to sort of Indonesia. And um, yeah, the weathers aren't bouncy and bumpy. Yeah, and, and the win uh, the winter times aren't as harsh as what they are in uh, how do you say it? Wellington, windy Wellington, windy New Zealand. Um, you talked mentioned briefly about some of the problems maybe players face here in Indonesia with employees uh, employers. Have you got? Um, Give us a bit more information about that, you know, what kind of I would just have like sort of non payment clubs, yeah. yeah, clubs just don't want to pay players what they're owed. Um, they're delaying wages like sort of two, three months. Um, we just feel like when you've got a contract, you know, like and both the parties sign it, you should honour it, you know, like yeah. um, it's not just the players signing it often it's a club signing as well, so you're offering that money so you should be able to you should be able to you should have that money in your budget for that player for the whole twelve months. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just about treating the players with respect. Uh, until now, I guess the usual mechanism has been to complain to FIFA, yep. which with various degrees of success and time involved. How, by being more vocal, by having the players' union here, how do you, do you intend to um, cut out FIFA and get things done more, more locally? Um, see, that's sort of FIFA uh, set up FIFPro and sort of FIFPro sort of Asia. Um, they've come in here and we've set up the play, they've set up the players union here. So hopefully with the players union here we can set up an NDRC, which is the National, National Disputes Resolution Chamber. So right. we don't need to go to FIFA. We can go to that here and we can get a sort of quick answer. And sort of players aren't waiting two years to uh, you know like yeah. solve their problems, resolve their you know differences with clubs. Right, two years. Time, yeah, which is time consuming. Up to two years you can with FIFA even longer sometimes. Right. Have you had any successes yet? Have you had any trial runs or? I've heard, you know, they've had some, like, since I've been, I've only been, like, sort of uppy for, for, I think, now a month. Yeah. So we've sort of, with the LPO, with the restructuring on it, we're sort of, like, you yeah, taking it slowly as well, waiting to see what happens with the league and the structure and all that. So, yeah, we're sort of, yeah, like, sort of, we're sort of starting pretty slow. All right. How does an Aussie get involved in this kind of thing anyway? I mean, local politics almost. I don't know. Like, I've been here a long time. I've been here six years now, six and a half almost. And, um, yeah, I just sort of... Yeah, I want to stick up for the players. The players' union in Australia is very strong, and 
that sort of value, you know, help the players out, you know, like a fair bit. And um, it's not also just about helping the players out, it's also about going to the community and like sorting up, setting up, how do you say it, like coaching things for kids and just a lot of other things, you know, like um, it's good for the players, you know, if we're all strong together, I think, you know, we can we can make a big difference in the league. All right, talking about the league, which is starting in two weeks' time, and you're kind of a man in the know sometimes, um, what's it going to look like? Who knows, you know, like, um, let's hope it's, you know, like, I prefer one one big league, because you're playing against big teams week in, week out, yeah. but um, if you need the two leagues, well then so be it, but I'm what I'm hearing, you know, like, between 18 and 24 teams, one big league, so, yeah, which, which would be good, they've set up that verification process for clubs, so the decent ones, the ones that have the right facilities, the finance and that only pass, which is great, you know, like, and so hopefully that sort of helps the players out, you know, improves the quality of Indonesian football. Yeah.